The best gifts have three characteristics. One, it shows you thought about the person. Two, you made it yourself. And three, it has utility. A custom set of six-sided dice meets all of those criteria, plus it will push your design and machining skills. Kevin Barnett in the Carbide 3D Studio. Today we're going to build your CNC skills and show you a feature in the software you didn't even know was there. Let's get to making some dice. Six-sided dice are in a wide variety of games. People use them all over the place, including to worship Satan. The witchcraft, the demonism, the spells. Now you might say, why would you make dice? You could just go buy them on the internet. There's a whole world of dice on Etsy. Yeah, you're right. Why make anything? This video's over. No, of course this video's not over. You own a machine so you can make things. Let's dive into the software right now. Showing the design process can get super tedious. If you want to see an exact replica, we put out two great videos recently, start to finish complete design projects. Here I'm just going to go over the highlights. You let me know in the comments below if you want to see a start to finish with this particular project. I'm happy to do it. To begin, I constructed a series of boxes that are exactly the same size as the thickness of my material. The thickness is defined in the job setup. I've also set it up for the stock that I have. I had a scrap piece of aluminum floating around. That's perfect for prototyping. It's different than you would use for production. For that, I'm thinking about doing a production video, how you would run a whole bunch of dice, how you would set up a production run that was a lot more efficient. Again, in the comments, let me know if you want to see that type of video, your enthusiasm for such a thing would make me spend time on it. One huge point here, make sure you measure your stock accurately and put that number in. Here it's doubly critical because it's going to match the size of the boxes we're creating. I set up the boxes and then I set about laying out my numbers. The number dots had to be big enough that I could use a 1 8 inch end mill. With those successfully laid out, I did a 0.1 offset to the outside of the boxes to the inside of the numbers. This is so I can set up two different chamfer paths because everything needs chamfers, particularly dice need chamfers. Onto the tool pathing, I set up an initial cutout, the chamfers, the rest of the cutout, and a whole bunch of different tool path groups for the sides. You're gonna have to set up one for each side. It was a lot of copy and paste. I would copy the tool paths, then I would edit the vectors to which they apply. And that was for both the actual number marks as well as the chamfers inside of it. So you can activate or deactivate whichever number you happen to be running over in the MDF pockets. With my first pass at toolpathing complete, I'm ready to go run version one. That's how I roll. I go cut so I can learn. Okay, down here at the machine. I've already run this program a couple of times. I have two different setups here. I've got my aluminum plate set up and my pocketing setup that's waiting for the next operation, the flip. Our first ones came out not too bad. That first side is pretty good, I'm pretty happy. I also cut a second set, which I've already made all the way through. Normally, I'm learning along right with the video. Here, I went through the whole project first and I'm coming back and recapping parts of it for you guys to learn so you can accomplish it at your place. What I changed with this particular version, the third one I just cut, is that I left a plate underneath so that all four of them are linked together. This linked version is gonna fit quite nicely right into that pocket. It's gonna be perfectly placed and it has a one millimeter top on it that's gonna be cut off just by the chamfer. I don't have to do any more work on the sides. I'm already pretty happy with the finish on the sides here. Now that I have a plate linked, my first op, I could probably go around and do a quick finishing pass. I could set it up so I'm cutting an outer contour for most of what I'm doing with this first operation. And then I could do a quick outer contour to improve the surface finish a little bit. But I'm already pretty happy. You can continue to refine what you're doing with your parts, with your project, time and again. 
And remember throughout, be patient with yourself, be patient with the different aspects of the project, from the design to the work holding to the refining of the cutting paths. When it comes to time, I think often a lot of you are in too much of a hurry. Oh! Wow, 13! If you're making a hundred of something or a thousand of something, then that extra 15 seconds or even one minute might make a difference. If you're not doing that, it makes no difference. You'd rather have a better part coming off of the machine that you don't have to post process as much. I think a lot of people trying to cut fast are not taking into account the post processing that they are creating by hurrying through the cut. So remember to balance those aspects. All right, I'm gonna put this thing in my jig that I've cut into the MDF. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, yeah, see how this next round turns out. Always be iterating. Yeah, you caught it, didn't you? You saw the movement of the sixes in the whole plate because those MDF pockets were not tight enough. So I cut a new set and tightened everything up again. I'm still working on refining what the exact right size is for those versus like the coin project, which you may have seen before where I can get a good friction fit over and over again. This is a little bit different with the depth that's required and the cutting forces at work. Nevertheless, even the sixes came out just fine. We were moving around a little bit, but you really can't tell. And you notice that I brought in MC Etcher on the number four side, and I threw a little Bulls logo on there. Yeah, you know, it's probably Bulls, it's racing, it's Eagles, whatever it may be. It's whatever you have or whatever your client wants to throw those engravings on there with the MC Etcher or bring in a 132nd. There's all kinds of options when it comes to making a little bit different shape on the die. Look on the internet, get some ideas, see where you might go. Additionally, fills, of course, are a thing. I've already filled with enamel. We've used the G-Paints in the past on several projects, from a putter to a coin. You can use those in a variety of different colors, even just black, that, that looks pretty classic. But you're gonna have to get enough of a fill. I see already a couple of these don't have enough of a fill. You need to refine the process. You need to get it to a point where you like it, but you have to enjoy going there, and you have to not mind ending up with a ton of dice. I promised you a feature you didn't know existed in the software that you could learn. Inside of Carbide Motion, here's something that's gonna benefit you in this type of project. You can make known offsets in your machine for projects that you're gonna run frequently or when you're doing two operations at once. For instance, right now, the machine is set to an XY that corresponds with a third set of holes. This third set of holes was used in the production of that plate top set of dice. There's where that's located. What about if I wanna to go to this location here and run another set of dice, and then I wanna come back and run some more flips. Let's go ahead and set zero. We'll take this as our rough point of zero for our aluminum dice production. Obviously you'd wanna dial it in, but let's set zero here. Now I've rapid position to the middle of the machine. What if I tell it XY? NZ plus six, bang, right on there. 
in the software, I'm going to go to my quick actions and I'm going to tell it dice pocket number three and I'm going to tell it yes, set it to there as your zero point. And now if I jog, let me pull the Z up a little bit here. By rapid position to current XY and Z plus six, bang, there we go. We're right back to that same setup we had earlier with our dice. We can rerun this program once we've produced the new set and we can put the sides on all of them. And you can do that at any time. That's saved in Carbide Motion. Let me show you how to set up this particular feature. We'll dive into the software again. Normally when we head into the software, we go into create. We're going into motion this time. And first thing you have to do is set a zero position. I've put in the carbide tin here as a false zero, just to show you how this works. Go into motion and go to set zero and set your zero. Zero all as you would normally do. Then back to your run, your main page with the job info. Quick actions is what you're looking for. Click on that and then you wanna edit user macros. You notice I have several presets in here already. Let's add a new one. Having clicked edit user macros, your next click is create from current zero. This creates a new user macro and a known zero point. You wanna give this macro a unique name so you can identify it. Mine is carbide 3D tin zero. Hit save and okay. You have now saved that position inside of carbide motion. Next, I'll use one of my previous macros to set the machine zero to the dice pockets location. Let's wrap it to current XY, and the machine goes directly left. Hitting Z plus six shows the machine is now ready to cut more dice sides. What if I wanted to return to where the aluminum dice cutouts are located? The same workflow applies back to the run screen, click on quick actions, and then click the appropriate macro. By clicking yes, you accept, then go to the jog menu and hit continue. Once again, clicking XY has the machine wrapping over. Z plus six. With that zero set, you're ready to cut out some more dice. Returning to our initially set carbide tins location is again the same procedure. Go to run, quick actions, and then click carbide 3D tin zero. Once again, click yes. Into the jog menu, quickly pull the Z up. Current XY, right back to the tins. Definitely experiment with this feature. It can be hugely beneficial when you're doing flip machining or if you're making multiple parts in a single project. Whatever comments or questions you have about this video, including if you want to see a long form video of the design, put it in the comments below and I'll be back in the studio with more information, ideas, and inspiration.